I met Susan at my first course at UCSB, which was Introduction to Botany. And I was usually the kid that would sit in the back of a classroom. And her class was so interesting and so engaging that I would rush in early and get the front row seat. You know, Susan really kind of inspired me at the very beginning of my career. She was so passionate about, about it that you just got caught up in it. She always had a lot of students working in the lab, and it wasn't what I typically saw with other faculty where, you know, if you're an undergraduate working in a lab, you spend a lot of time washing glassware. I think it's not an exaggeration to say that she's probably trained hundreds of students who have gone on to a variety of careers ranging from dentistry to optometry or bookkeeping or who knows what um, about the process of science and, and I, I, it's my hope that they're you know they're future ambassadors for um, for science in our society. Susan Mazur is boundless energy and is a tireless advocate for um, citizen science to get the public to understand and engage with the natural world. Yeah, I think that she's deeply passionate about the planet and making it a better place. And this is a, a route to do that. She also helped to found the California Phenology Project to bring all of these people together to collect data that is gonna help inform us about climate change. She's a real leader and saw that this was something that was uh, necessary and that could be done, and she has gotten right in there and made it happen. Susan's been well known for a long time for doing really solid evolutionary biology research. It's really important to Susan that we understand botany and biology and evolution in the context of the natural world because that's where natural selection happens. She does experiments from field work and manipulative studies in the field and really intensely trying to understand particular species and how they have evolved and adapted. And then she brings them into the greenhouse and does uh, selection experiments and things that she, where she can control things even more finely than in the in the field but then she takes these really broad approaches as well where she looks for broad patterns across many hundreds if not thousands of species and finds these really broad patterns that then she can use her individual studies to inform how those broad patterns have come about and I think that perspective is is really inspiring you know, in a relatively short amount of time, you know, less than 30 years, she's watched the landscape both within academia and in the natural world change so much that I think that's really inspired her to make a push to get people outside, get them thinking about this, and just to look around and see how much the world is changing.